Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Med School Minutes podcast, where we discuss what it takes to attend and successfully complete a medical program. This show is brought to you by St. James School of Medicine. Here is your host, Kashik Gua. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Med School Minutes, where we talk about everything MD related with the focus on international students, specifically students from the Caribbean. Today, we have a very, very special guest, our new provost, Dr. Jose Ramirez. So Dr. Jose Ramirez has a unique distinction of actually working in several different um, countries, which is relatively uh, unique for most physicians because it's it's a pretty long-winded process to get licensed. But uh, we want, we'll talk to Dr. Ramirez a little bit about his experiences in working in all these different countries and as well as what he thinks are the biggest reasons students don't necessarily succeed in medical school. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Ramirez. Hi, Kashik. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for making time for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, this is my second time okay. in this podcast. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Uh, really thrilled, excited. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And um, so, you know, with, without further ado, why don't we just kind of jump into a little bit of your background? Why don't you tell us where you studied after that? You know, where did you get your first license? And then let's give us a high level timeline of your career. Well, I finished med school in uh, mid 2004. Mm -hmm. Then I went into a resident. My country, you need to do one year of paying okay. your medical uh, fees, or me or medical university fees and tuition, working one year for the government. I did that, then applied for residency, got into surgery, finished my surgical program. Okay. Uh, then from there, uh, I, have, I was working in three different states at the same time. In Venezuela? <laughs> in Venezuela. Oh, okay. So it was a triple frontier for three states, working in three different hospitals. Yeah, pro plus private practice, plus right. working with my family, they're also surgeons. Right. So yeah, that was how it happened. Then uh, due to the economic problems in my country, I decided to move out to try other places. So that is why I have a license to practice in the Caribbean, CARICOM, okay. and also my license to practice in Spain. Okay. And are, are there any significant differences between practicing in Venezuela versus the CARICOM versus Spain, infrastructure-wise and uh, in, in skill-wise? Yeah, well, uh, in Venezuela, it's basically the same as working here in the, uh, in the United States. Okay. Uh, the same level, all my professors were trained here. Okay. So everything that happens here, it reflects. It was reflecting immediately back okay. in Venezuela. Um, for a few, hasn't happened again. But they're trying to bring back again the, the medical meetings, Congress, etc. Okay. Uh, regarding Spain, Spain, there is no worse. There's a amazing health system. Sometimes take a little bit to okay. see a patient, but in general, in the moment you arrive there, you have everything that the United States will okay. have. So no difference, okay. besides no pain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what is, infrastructurally, what do you think is better, Spain or the United States? That's a tough question. I will say they're in the same level. Okay. Yeah, same level because it's not only Spain, you need to put together the whole um, European right, uh, right. community. And you need to put together Germany with Spain, with France, with Italy, Portugal. Okay. Right, right, right. You know, so I you see. have a huge block that has amazing physicians, amazing technology, same level as here. So as far as a uh, student skill is concerned, do you think that studying in, say, Venezuela versus the Caribbean versus Spain versus the United States, the students are coming out with any particular advantage going to any one of these regions? Well, uh, first and all, uh, in some countries, uh, medical education is free. Right. It's paid by the state, right. basically, well, paid by your taxes, everybody's taxes. But in Venezuela, uh, medical education is free. Oh, right. Uh, then in Spain, you have a double system, private and public. Obviously, okay. everybody wants to go into the public one. And we have here in America, but basically, it's the same books. Okay. 
exactly the same books. There is no difference in uh, regarding information. Information is the same, same human body, same pathologies. Obviously, you have certain differences regarding epidemiology that you will see specific pathologies for that region. Same as here that you have different pathologies in the south, uh, okay. west, different pathologies in the Ohio, Ohio uh, Valley, uh, okay. different pathologies here in uh, Illinois, for right, example. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, as far as uh, the actual, so in your opinion, as far as the actual training of the students is concerned, in your mind, as far as a student can potentially say pass a standardized test like the step one, they're essentially the same. It really truly doesn't matter what they studied as long as they're passing the test. Is that uh, fair to say? I will, I remember one thing. One thing is to pass a standardized test and the other thing is to study medicine. Okay. Two different ball games. Uh, when you're sitting for the step one, you're facing a board exam. Okay. So they're really specific with what they want and the way they ask the questions is really specific. Okay. Compared to studying medicine that includes uh, not only studying the full human body regarding biochemistry, physiology, pathology, etc., but it's also uh, personal connections with other people, how to learn how to play in a team, right, a right, health right. team, uh, how to develop your communication skills, something that is hard to measure only with a single exam. Uh, I see, I see. But it's, right now is the only way. Right, right. And that's it. That's, okay. that, that's the name of the game. Okay. I, the United States is not the only uh, place in the world that this happened. You, ha you have it in Europe, in every single country. You have it in Latin America, Asia, right. et cetera. Yeah. So yeah, and, and it feels like most of the countries are going to the standardized exam approach nowadays. I know yeah. a lot of countries in the yeah. last half decade or so have changed their regulations where they had a more subjective approach for their students. Now it's like, oh, yeah, you know, just take a test and if you pass it, yeah. You, you will know. cover what we want you okay. to cover. Um, so obviously you've dealt with a ton of students. Um, you've been with St. James. You're no stranger to St. James. Um, you were uh, one of the primary surgeons in Anguilla mm -hmm. when you came across St. James. Yeah. And you were helping in the uh, in an unofficial capacity for a couple of months before you came on board to teach the kids. Yeah. And then eventually, now, well, you are our provost now. So... Uh, being a part of medical education, and I believe even in Venezuela, you were involved with some sort yeah. of medical education as well. Um, and, and so from your experience, what do you think truly defines the success of a medical student, especially since you've seen all these candidates from different parts of the world, including Spain, which is obviously a very developed economy, USA, the Caribbean, as well as Venezuela? Uh, for me, is once you get your plan, uh, you say, uh, I don't know what age, 18, 17, mm -hmm. 15, I want to go to medical school, I want to go through this path, you need to have a plan. Right. It's not suddenly that you come one day, the, one day you're thinking about engineering, right. um, I don't know what else, uh, arts, you name it, and suddenly you end up, oh, I'm in medical school, I got accepted, I apply, and now I'm here. And, but I don't have a plan mm -hmm. how I can uh, reach my goals if I don't have a plan. So right. part of this path is to have a plan. Okay. It's how many years I'm going to take to, I'm going to commit to this plan. Right. So if I'm 22, fresh out of college, sounds amazing, 22, I'm done at 26, 27, waiting a little bit here and right. there, starting residency 28. Depends on what you want. Probably you will be ready at 34. Okay. Sounds like a good plan, but sometimes- Does it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, sometimes it's going to take a little bit longer, but yeah, in general is that. And, right. and we need to remember that the thing about our school that we receive a lot of people looking at medicine as a second path a second career. School, yeah, that is we true. have a lot of uh, chiropractors. We right. have nurses. Right. We have other uh, health-related sciences right. in our both of our campus and uh, clinical sciences. So th these 
people, they had a plan. Okay. okay. So I'm doing okay right, right. as a nurse, for example, but I have that little bug of I could do more or I, I think I have what is necessary to reach to the next point. And that's the part I will say motivation mm -hmm. is one of the biggest thing that we need to search in our students. Okay. So uh, what are the steps that students can actually take to motivate themselves? Tricky question because it could be, do you have a plan? Okay. Uh, are you plan are you planning to have every exam is going to be a little battle to win the war? Right, right. I'm thinking about the tomorrow's exam or I'm thinking about next month right. block exam. Right. So you need to be aware of what's going on in your life. Okay. Because not only motivation, remember that we're humans and uh, as humans we have social issues, mm -hmm. we have uh, family issues, right, right, we have... Right. Uh, problems with ourselves, like uh, any disease that can change the length of that path in any given moment. Right. We're seeing that some students right now are presenting a lot of stress during the step one. They did amazing uh -huh. on the MBME. Yeah. Amazing, like uh, numbers out of the chart. And now they're going and sit for the step one and here in the United States and they're not doing that well. Right. So... Right. It's motivation, it's a stress, family problems. So it's a combination of issues. Okay. But I would like to see more motivation. And I think we're trying to do that. If we motivate our students, that will motivate our professors. Right. It's going to create an infinite loop of motivation. Hey, you guys are doing amazing. Let's try a little bit harder. Let's do this, let's change that. Mm -hmm. And can help a lot with our students. Okay. Um, so I, I think just to summarize what you just said, it sounds, it, it's really important because every time I talk to a student, they are looking at their lives as a continuum and they're not breaking it up into small victories. Yeah. which you just mentioned. They're yeah. like, I want to be a doctor. But in order to be a doctor, the first step is to pass MD1, yeah. which a lot of students are like, oh, you know what? This is not that important. I'm going to focus on the step one. You can't run if you can't walk. Yeah, you need to have certain basic knowledge. Right, right. So, for example, you went to school t uh, 10 years ago and you took biology 10 years ago. I will say that 50% of that biology won't work right okay. now because of changes in biology, okay. new discoveries, etc. So you need to be a motivated student. You need to have a plan. You need to have a strong study habits because if you don't know how to study, how you're planning okay. to get this task okay. done. So in, And uh, we were saying that the rigors of the program, medicine right. is not easy. Right, of course. Medicine is not easy at all. Right. It's not easy, yeah. So, so you said that uh, students have to know how to study. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? What does that mean? Because I'm going to be honest, and I've been a little surprised about this because every time I've gone to the islands and spoken to students, I get a good portion of students gasping when I tell them the amount of studying that they have to do for the upcoming years. It seems like they're completely clueless. And I'm going to be honest, you can obviously uh, find, and when you go to social media in particular, people don't talk about the crazy hard work that goes into all the successes that people are portraying in social media. Yeah. What, you, what they're sh showing is the fancy cars and the and and the lovely houses but no one's really talking about how much time did that person study whatever profession that is and i feel that even in the uh, medical community a lot of that is what students see and a lot a lot of that is what motivates them but nobody is talking about how to study how long they have to study and i have seen a significant number of our students when i talk to them about at an average, and I'm not a doctor nor an educator, but when I read the AAMC uh, studies that an average student studies about nine, 10 hours a day during the duration of their um, um, uh, MD, 
Uh, most students say, oh, that's not, that's impossible. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I can do it without that. What are your thoughts on that? Number one. Number two is like, what other study techniques can they use? For me, once you have your plan, you mm -hmm. need to understand um, how I can approach this, okay. how I can solve this problem that I have in front of me. Some people is amazing memorizing facts. Right. Some people is better analyzing right. the data. So I can give them a problem and they can break that problem in little pieces and connect the dots and say, okay, this is the solution for this problem. So we, and that's the problem with medicine right now that we have the two systems together. Mm. You will say anatomy, uh, microbiology, uh, probably a little bit of pathology and pharmacology, a lot of memorization, Okay. a lot of memorization, in fact. There is no way to change it. Okay. I will call this mic, mic, because that's the mic. Right. And it's connected to this cord. There is nothing I can change about no. it. I need to memorize this. Sounds things. like a language, learning a language it's almost. It's learning a new language. Wow. So let's say anatomy, because I was a professor of anatomy. Mm -hmm. You will say, okay, name of the, name the bones of the hand, etc. And there are different names. It's not something that you right. use every day. Right. So what tool could you use to help you? So a space memorization, like you see in flashcards, mm -hmm. uh, Anki app. Anki okay. app is something that a lot of people is using to memorize, memorize okay. the facts, especially for these specific okay. subjects. Okay. Anatomy, microbiology, pharmacology, helps a lot. And what is that, Anki app? Is that an app that you can just download from Down the app store? Yeah. Okay. You download that, they have several decks, and, okay. and you choose, what uh, deck uh, could help you the most okay. out of it. There is a specific one that if you go to any student forum, okay. all the students know which one Got is it. the one that you need. Got it. So imagine you wake up, let's say 6 a.m. in the morning, you need to be at 8 o'clock in uh, school. Uh, you take 30 minutes of your starting the day and you do, I don't know, probably 50 flashcards mm -hmm. for anatomy. Right. You took that out of the way. You're memorizing new stuff. You repeat it in two, three days. Let me go back. And you're preparing that way, learning a new language mm -hmm. or learning how to name things that are in somebody's body. Right, right. That you didn't know the names and you're ready for your uh, quiz or your block exam. What other tools can help you to study? Doing questions. Okay. Right now, we're realizing that the exam has become so standardized that if you repeat questions and go through the questions and learn the concepts through the questions can help you so much. Oh, wow. So that combination, analysis of questions, read the question, understand what is behind that. It could be a concept about suprarenal glands, but these uh, are divided into three different uh, tiers. Which tier is doing this in the hypothalamus, on the hypothesis, etc. So if you learn these little details and combine them, the problem is that to combine everything, it takes like a really mature student, not person, but student, mm -hmm. like a good study techniques, a mature one, meaning like, okay, I saw anatomy, I can understand uh, where the hypothalamus is and how it's sending uh, a signal through hormones to the hypothesis and from here goes to this organ, this organ, this organ. Okay, okay. sounds easy. But now it's combined. Now let me involve a little bit of the kidneys. Let me involve a little bit of the lungs. What will happen uh, right, in right, the right. heart? What will happen with my plasma volume? What, what will happen with right, everything? Right, right. So putting the puzzle together. Okay. It takes a little bit. Okay. So quick question, quick segue here, but is that why you changed our MD5? Like our MD5 review course was basically subject by subject. And I know one of the first things you did when you came here was to really change that to a system-based approach. Yeah. Is that is that why you changed that to kind of Put everything, oh, okay. bring everything together, yeah. So it wasn't, I wish it was only me, but well, <laughs> it was right. a combination of professors. We right. were working course, together. And uh, the opinion of the students mm -hmm. is really important for us. Okay, I see. We, at least, I know that several professors talk to students uh, mm. at the end of the block and they bring their suggestions. I reach to students right. and I ask them directly, hey, what do you think about the program? What, 
what we could change mm -hmm. that is in between a normal right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. you know uh, suggestion right right and uh, we use that and that was one of the most important let's change from a subject base to a system base and now we have this md5 that is more related could be related in a, a higher level with the uh, MBME and the USMLE step one. Okay. Um, so uh, other than that, uh, do, do you think that there are any potentially other tools, not just uh, 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 like, you know, apps or like, as you mentioned, the Anki app, are there other apps or tools that a student can potentially avail to either keep them, keep their focus steady or um, for them to improve their success or test taking skills? Is there anything out there like that that you think would have been helpful or would be helpful for our students? Uh, for example, it depends how effective you are okay. during the day. One thing, how to do it, put your phone away. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, and try to disconnect the ability to receive messages on your laptop. Okay. Because you need your laptop to study right. plus your books. Put your phone in the living room, put it in a drawer, put it somewhere else that you can uh, reach. Let's say that you today, oh, I want to do 50 questions, 80 questions, just to practice right. before my exam. Break those questions into blocks of 10 questions. I do 10. Now my reward, I check my phone. I'm uh, going into okay. Instagram and check, okay, I have a message. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom, my dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, kids, everybody's texting, fine. Rest five minutes, going back. Again, phone away. Right. How effective are you? Put a clock and every time you stop studying, you stop the clock. Okay. At the end of the day, you will realize how many hours you were studying in reality. Okay. This is from German people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Efficiency first. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, a way to approach. If you feel that sometimes nothing is getting to you, take a longer break, go mm. out, breathe some air, come back, drink a, a cup of coffee. Do not ab abuse coffee, especially in the night, because you're going to be up all night. Uh, and how effective are you to learn? Right, 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 you right, know? right, right. Um, just uh, a question is, when you were in med school, at an average, how much did you study? At, at an average, including class hours and stuff, in a day during the that duration while you were in med school as well as during uh, your residency? Our, our system it was a little bit uh, different. Uh -huh. We have midterms and finals. Right. So in that way, usually two, three weeks before your midterm, you're starting, like really starting right. everything that happened before that. Right. And for the finals, the right, same. Right. You spend hours, hours right. and hours reading. But, and back in the day, yeah. when I went to med school, internet wasn't that oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so it was more about the PowerPoints yeah. that professors use is a guide for the professor. Okay. But So they can teach. Okay. So the information uh, wasn't there. Right, information right, right. was in Robin's pathology. Right. Uh, it was in uh, Gayton's uh, book of physiology. Right. There. So you need I to see. go to the book and read the book. Right. So chapter by chapter. Right. So it wasn't like, oh, you know what? I missed the lecture. Not a biggie. I'm just going to go to YouTube and check out some other professor yeah. who gave the same lecture, which is something I hear all the time from right our now. Students. Yeah. A lot of people are doing it sometimes. It's hard to grasp the concept. Of course. And fi you find an amazing person on right. YouTube that can explain the concept in five minutes, uh, right. super right. easy. Right. Go but, for it. But did you study, say, you know, eight hours a day for like four years while you were in med school? Oh, well, med school is six years. Six years. <laughs> but, really yeah. but yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. And and don't worry, when, once you get into residency, it gets worse <laughs> <laughs> because you're working and studying. Right, that is true. Yeah, so, so be prepared for that. Well, um, do you have any words of wisdom for our students? Be aware that medicine is hard, come with a plan. The time you're wasting right now doing whatever except studying is a time that you won't recover. And let's face it, Time is our currency. 
Okay. You don't want to lose time. Um, so recently I've been on the island and I've spoken to some students. Again, it's us- my, usually sh- my usual spiel is that if you're not studying at least eight hours a day, uh, you need to take a step back and ask yourself, are you doing something right or are you doing something wrong? Uh, a lot of students don't like to hear that, obviously. There, but um, uh, my my question to you is, and 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 I keep telling them that if you're do, studying like that, um, you should also have breaks in built to, in built and take take a breather. How important is taking a breather and taking possibly a step back for uh, a day or two? To get back in there, how important is that to you? For me, it's one of the most important okay. things because I saw firsthand yeah. mixing Coca Cola with coffee yeah. at midnight just to keep studying is not the best option. <laughs> <laughs> Coca Cola and coffee, I gotta try that. that yeah, sounds... no, it's not fun. It's not fun <laughs> at all. And but you need to be effective with your time. Understand that you are here mm. with a goal. And I understand you need to have fun because yeah. you need to break right, right. out of the study. Otherwise, I'm telling you, right. bad things could happen to the way you see the world. Right. And yeah, go out, have a beer. If you don't drink, go and run, and right. play a sport, go to the gym, go to the beach, do whatever. Right. And don't feel bad about that because you earned uh, that time. Yeah. You were studying five days, eight hours per day. It's Saturday. I need to a break. Okay. I need to walk my dog like a good walk. I need to clean my place. That doesn't mm-hmm. bring me peace. Right. Uh, I need to call my parents. That's right. something that a lot of students here, they don't do. <laughs> no, I need to call my spouse. Yeah. You name it. But do something different that day and okay. break out of the study. Then you come with a fresh mind. Right, right. All right. Well, thank you so much for the lovely suggestions, Dr. Ramirez. Um, And obviously, I'm pretty sure you are going to be visiting both campuses very, very soon. Um, And I hope uh, our students watch this and come to you and talk to you about study tips and study uh, essentials and do's and don'ts um, when you do visit. But uh, any last minute um, or, or last final pointers for the students, especially the ones in MD4 who are getting ready for the NBMEs and the steps. Any pointers for them? Uh, Right now, try to learn how to control your stress. Okay. Learn how to control your stress. Uh, It's going to be even more stress once you're practicing. Really? So if you start early, it's going to be a lot better than later. Okay. To control respiration techniques, mm-hmm. yoga, I don't know. Anything to control your stress because I saw it in several students. Stress is, I think, is the the killer of the this right. generation, of our generation, every, every everybody's right. generation. If, oh. Without stress, there is no problems. Right. But once you are there, right. it's right. hard right. to come back. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much. And uh, just from based on what we heard from Dr. Ramirez, uh, please remember there is no shortcut to becoming an MD. So uh, again, thank you so much, Dr. Ramirez. And uh, don't forget to follow and download our other episodes. You can uh, find us on any of the large platforms, including Spotify, Google Play, and uh, Apple as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to Med School Minutes. Thank you so much for tuning into our show. We hope you enjoyed another episode of Med School Minutes. If you like our content, please follow us and receive notification when a new show is posted. This podcast is brought to you by St. James School of Medicine. For a video version of this podcast, please check us out on sjsm.org slash video.